Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. The fiery furnace. Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 <coughs> through 23. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He commanded the most mighty men who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their trousers, their coats and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was not urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were three Jewish men. Three Jewish men who had been taken captive into the land of Babylon at the fall of Judah. The Babylonians were actually seeking to drive God out of the Jewish culture. I'll get a hold of that now. The Babylonians wanted the God of the Jews gone. I submit to you, the very same thing is happening in our nation today, folks. People at the highest levels of leadership in this nation have determined that the God of Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, the God of Christianity has got to go. Ms. Dean and I were at church last Sunday, my mom and dad's church, and I said to the pastor who graduated with me from high school, actually, I've known him since high school, I said to him after the sermon that he preached, I said to him on the, out, the way out, I said, you know they're coming for us. <laughs> he said, I know and I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. Ain't they're you? coming, folks. You better be ready. You better be ready. The king is coming for us. But there's another king coming as well. Amen. He's going to end it all. He's going to take care of business when he comes back. In the meantime, we're going to have to deal with whatever comes our way. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to deal with the godless folk of their society, you and I have got to deal with it as well. Look at our nation. As it stands this very day, God has been driven out of the public school system. He's been driven out of government. And this very day, the government and other organizations in our nation is doing everything it can to drive God out of the public square. 
They're coming for us. And their intention is to shut us up. Now, these three men had become actually respected by the Babylonian community. They actually held leadership positions in the Babylonian Empire. And yet they were living in a completely, totally paganistic society. That's what our nation is rapidly becoming, folks. A paganistic society. Someone said the other day on Facebook, what we need to do is we need to elect a Christian as president. Well, I have no problem with that. Amen. That'd be wonderful, but I suggest to you this morning that as far down as our culture, as our society has slidden morally today, I doubt very seriously that the American people are willing to elect a true God-fearing Christian to the president. I think you're right, preacher. I think you're right. It's what I we're living in a nation who wants nothing to do with this thing called morality anymore. They want to throw God out because God holds people to a standard of holy morality. Amen. That's true. Amen. And suddenly, here we have two decrees coming down from the king. Uh-oh. You know we've got decrees coming down from the king in our nation today. The king supremes. The Supreme Court has become the king of this nation. Though. Exactly, yeah. And what they say goes. And so two decrees came down from the king one of the decrees was this. Everybody must bow down and worship this statue. Everybody's got to bow down and worship the statue. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused the order. They said, no, we will not bow. Are you ready to make that vow this morning, folks? Yes. Are you willing to stand up before the world today and say as a God-fearing, God-loving Christian, I will not bow. That's what it's coming to. Amen. Praise so God. Write it down. It's coming to that, folks. You're either going to bow to the God of this world, or you're going to face persecution. That's right, you're out. It's coming. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, No, sir, we'll not bow. We've got one God we serve. And their disobedience earned them a trip to the fiery furnace. The day's coming in this nation, folks. When you make a stand and you determine I'm going to serve and I'm going to obey God and not man, you're going to be your feet are going to be put to the fire. Yeah, do whatever we can to you. Coming for the preachers first, I believe. Disobedience earned them a trip to the fire. There was another order given as well. That order came down from the king and they were commanded that they were not to pray to God for 30 days. 
You know what old Daniel did? As soon as he got the order, he went to his prayer room. He went to the window and prayed. Opened up the window where everybody could see him in here. Amen. Daniel said, I'm going to pray. Bless God. I don't care what man tells me. Amen. And he prayed so they could all see him in here. He knew it was going to cost him something. Far too many years in this country, folks, it hadn't cost anything. It hadn't cost Christians anything to live for God. Those days were over. Daniel prayed and earned himself a trip to the lion's den. God closed him out. See, we've got pretty boy preachers standing in pulpits all across this country this morning telling you if you just obey God, everything just going to be wonderful and cheery and hunky dory and smooth. That ain't right. Man. Too much evil in Faithfulness to God earned these men a trip to the fiery furnace. You and I are living not only in a world but in a nation that is almost day by day now becoming more antagonistic and hostile to true biblical Christianity. Oh, the apostate church out there don't bother folks. They, they, the, devil, the devil is not concerned about the apostate church. They're not a threat. That's right. He already owns them. Just like he owns the world. He's already taken them captive. No, his concern now, the devil's concern in our nation today is the Meshachs, the Abednego's, and Shadrachs. Yeah. That's what's irritating him today. Those who refuse to bow. Those who refuse to cave. Those who refuse to compromise. Those who will stand up like John and Peter and say, bless God, we're going to serve God. We're going to obey God, not man. Exactly. That's who's troubling the world today. And so we're seeing in our own nation That we are, we are not are, we've already become a great minority in this day. It hadn't always been that way. Amen. Though. Amen. The Christians have become a great minority in this nation. And there is, make no mistake about it, there is a satanic movement. There is a satanic conspiracy in this nation to throw God out of everything. At least the God of this book. You can worship Baal. You can serve Baal. You can worship Caesar. You can worship and bow down to government. But the days of worshiping the God of this book We're on the way to being outlawed if some have their way back. They're trying to phase it out. And so there's actually a literal satanic movement to throw God out of everything. And if you're looking and you're listening, you can see it progressing at an alarming rate, folks. I told Brother Gleek this morning, Time Magazine, used to be one of the foremost magazines in the nation. That's right. Has an article. Is it time to do away with the tax-exempt status of the church? They're coming for us. They're coming. They're coming and they're going to say, you're either going to bow, you're going to compromise, you're going to do as we say, or we're going to cut you off.
And there are many professing Christians. There are many entire denominations. There are many so-called preachers in pulpits who have already bowed to the government. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow. They did not bend nor bow. They didn't bend nor bow. The good news is neither did they burn in the fire. Amen. God never promised to keep us out of the fire, folks. But He's promised to see us through it. We're either going to stand by Christ or are we going to bow down to other gods? We're either going to cower over in the corner and tremble in fear, or are we going to be possessed by the boldness of the Spirit of God and stand for righteousness? Amen. We're either going to fall in with the crowd and do what everybody else is doing, or are we going to stand for the truth? And those who are going to stand for the truth are going to be a great minority, folks. We're either going to hold fast to our faith or we're going to bow. I was thinking the other day, you know, a Southern Baptist has several colleges, seminaries throughout the nation. They have something called accreditation. They have to meet certain standards to maintain that accreditation. They have tax-exempt status. They, they receive their their students receive government aid, government grants, government funds. Years ago, when I was in college, the government was really had just begun sometime prior to that to give government funds and grants to some students who were attending Christian colleges. But there were some strings attached. And even back then, the government was saying, if you want all of these benefits that we're offering to colleges, well, one of the things you've got to do is you have to teach courses on psychology in college. This is one area where the independent fundamentalist Baptist got it right. Independent fundamentalist Baptist got colleges all over this country. They're not accredited. They don't receive government funds. They don't receive government grants. So the government can't come to them and say, bow down or we're going to strip all these benefits from them. What are, what are, what is the Southern Baptist colleges going to do when the government comes and say look we afford you all of these benefits now you're going to have to start hiring homosexuals you're going to have to start allowing homosexuals this 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 or we're going to have to take all these benefits from you what are they going to do they're either going to buy or they're going to stand wouldn't doubt it they might It's been a long time coming, folks. I want to say to you this morning, God's people must stand for the truth of God's Word. Yeah, we're going to stand. Sure. We've got to stand on God's Word, folks. 
And the first thing is this. We must stand boldly in the face of the challenge that we are facing this day. The church is facing a challenge, folks. Christians are facing a challenge. Pastors in pulpits are facing a challenge. And it's just getting started. The faith of these men was challenged. What was it challenged by? Their faith was challenged by the laws of the land. Did you hear that? They changed their laws. Their faith was challenged yeah. by the laws of the land. They were confronted with a choice. They would either remain faithful to God or they would obey the laws of man. That was their challenge. They determined that they were going to go with God. Peter and John faced a similar situation in the book of Acts. They were out in the street preaching Jesus. Here come the authorities. Here come the law. Drags them off the street, takes them in, and sits them down. Gives a little chat with them. Okay. Says, now you two men, you listen up. You're going to stop this preaching in the name of Jesus. You're going to shut it up. You're going to stop it or else. Turned them loose and what did they do? Went right back out of the street and started preaching Jesus again. Amen. And Peter said, when it comes to the law of God versus the law of man, we will obey the law of God. Amen. That's, what he That's where the church is today, folks. That's what they do too. That's where we are in this nation today. They were ordered to shut up stand down, not speak in the name of Jesus, they decided we're going to obey God rather than the laws of men. <coughs> the Scripture gives us that authority, folks. We are to abide by the dictates of government. We are to abide by the laws of the land until that law conflicts. That's right with the Word of God. Then we have the authority and the backing of God Almighty to stand Amen. for righteousness. There comes a time when we must stand. And that time has come. Folks. These men said we're not going to bow down to a statue. We're not going to bow down to your false gods. They essentially refuse to betray the one true God that they serve. They could have just given in and said, oh, let's just give in so we can all get along. And that's what a lot of folks are doing today, folks. Let's just give in so we can all